defending Donald Trump's emergency declaration we had on with Chris Wallace, Stephen Miller. And so look, Stephen Miller is apparently one of the most xenophobic people in our country. He was brought into the White House specifically to push for an end to immigration. Not undocumented immigration, illegal immigration, just all immigration. He has been pushing for that in a number of different ways. So he of course defends the president declaring a national emergency over what's happening at the border. But he also wants you to believe that what Donald Trump is doing is just standard run of the mill stuff. Unfortunately, he went on with Chris Wallace on Fox News and Chris Wallace was willing to point out that this is a sort of a historic take. National emergencies have been declared 59 times Correct. since 1976 when the law was passed, the National Emergencies Act. Can you point to a single instance, even one, where the president asked Congress for money, Congress refused to give him that money, and the president then invoked national emergency powers to get the money? Well, first of all, can you find out one case? You think that what you're missing, Chris, is that the national emergencies don't all have the same authorities and the same justification. That, but there have been 59. This, this, Can you find authority, one case like this that? This authority specifically refers to the use of military construction funds. Other emergencies, for example, were declared wait, 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 to be. I mean, if you, want to talk about military, if you want to talk about military constructions, do you know how many times military construction has been invoked as a national emergency? That one was in. Twice. Right. Twice. Once by George H.W. Bush during the middle of the Gulf War, and the second time by George W. Bush right after 9 11. Chris, can you this name. This is hard, like comparable. Can you, name, can you name one foreign threat in the world today outside this country's borders that currently kills more Americans than the threats crossing our southern border? You know, the, the, the joy of this is I get to ask you questions. You the don't get to ask no, The answer is no. But the, can't, then, then answer my question. Can you name one case where a president has asked Congress for money, Congress has refused, and the president has then invoked national powers to get the money anyway? Well, this current situation. Just yes or no, sir. Okay, so obviously that was a long video. We generally don't play videos that are that long. The reason we did it was we wanted you to know that he was never going to actually respond right. to that question. And he didn't. You, we could have gone on for a little bit longer. You never got an actual response from him. And it's important because they don't want you to believe that anything is happening out of the ordinary. But this is very much out of the ordinary. There are national emergencies, sure. There was Ebola under you know Barack Obama, there was 9-11. But this is a voluntary thing and it has never Never been done as a result of a purely political calculation following a budget negotiation. There's 59 national emergencies stretching back literally decades under Democrats, under um, under Republicans, under unified government, under divided government, and they can't find one example where the will of Congress in the area where specifically the Constitution says that Congress is supreme, that is the distribution of funds, where the president can simply say, "You didn't give me what I want." Okay, and now Stephen Miller asked about that. Says uh, this is legal because Congress passed a law for national emergencies back in the 70s, and that is true. But no law by itself overrides the Constitution. That is what the Supreme Court is set up to do: is to evaluate those discrepancies. So you can't simply say that Congress allowed it, and so we can do whatever we want. Right. Especially when later on he's asked about what if Congress overrides the national emergency declaration. He says, "Well, I mean, it's totally legal to do national emergencies, but in that law, it says." Says that they can be overridden. So he simultaneously wants to have his wall and eat it too on that. <laughs> that was good. Thank you. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't. So, um, I mean, look, we don't have much more time, but um, you've seen we had Friday the National Emergency Declaration. Mm -hmm. You had a conversation over the weekend around it. How do you think that it's been received generally by, by both politicians and by the media? How, how is it playing? You know, shockingly for me, and um, there's so many things that I don't, I'm not shocked about and that I complain and people are shocked about. Mm -hmm. There's been so much support, I think I've seen. You think? From, like strong from his supporters. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, everyone was so. I feel like he started to lose momentum a little bit because of the shutdown. And now it's like, oh yeah, get it this way. You're right, we're, we're, we're friends again. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it's so, I, you would think that this would be something that would scare people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like this is a slippery slope, we're not comfortable with this. You can't, you okay, you can't do that. Even if we want it, you can't do that. But this is, um, 
it's so it's been shocking for well, me. Well, to reassure you, at least outside it of politics. should be terrifying to everyone. Well, and I, I tried to make that case on Friday. Yeah. Uh, two thirds of uh, regular people did not want a national emergency to be declared, which means Trump's base was the ones who actually did support it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I do think that the precedent is scary, both in terms of presidents continuing to accrue more power, obviously, but even the precedent for someone like Lindsey Graham and the other Republicans in Congress who are supporting this, they're saying, you know what? In the future, we don't want to have this ex- exclusive power over the distribution of funds and, and budget and all of that. If the president wants it and if he disagrees with us, fine, he can just do this in the future. And will it be that difficult for a president to find some sort of grounds to declare a national emergency? Obviously, it will not be. Thank you very much for watching this clip from the damage report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full damage report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.